things down quickly as Allen is on the first carry. Could be procedure against Allen, the, ball the rookie at Warman. Well, number 65, the right guard, Mike Palumbo, just jumped prematurely. You know, a little tension maybe on the first offensive procedure. flight. Calgary, number 61. They cut Spalatini as well. Well, it, was, it had to be both of them, but a little eager, and then right away you see them giving the ball to Gary Allen, and I think that could be a key tonight. Bob Obilovich, in his sixth year as head coach of the Argonauts, got a little revenge for last year's playoff loss to the Tiger Cats last weekend with a last play victory in Hamilton. Well, you know, he did get some some form of revenge. I heard him in the warm-up as we were coming up from the field, John, and he kept telling and yelling at his guys, get off to a good start tonight. They've been slow all season long. They like to have a good first quarter. First and 15, Petros has the ball, and he's going nowhere. Not even back to the original line of scrimmage. Selwyn Drain, number 26, gain of four. It'll be second and 11. Well, last week, uh, Gil Renfro, you see him loosening up on the sidelines. Only 14 of 35, but, you know, statistics serve for losers sometimes because he threw a couple of big touchdown passes and he won the game. Rick Warman, on the other hand, came in and he did a pretty good job but just came up about seven yards short at the end of the game. Warman had some interception problems, has some difficulty here, but gets it away for Tim Petros. Petros, short of the first down on second and 11. Warman had some pressure, just released to Petros, and Petros... Picked up 10. He's going to get a great block from number 61, the left guard, Tom Spalatini. They set the screenplay up very well. Just really not enough breakaway speed to pick up that first down. Tough play to run against the Toronto Argonauts because, you know, you like to run a screen against a team that really rushes the quarterback and puts a lot of pressure on them. Toronto has had great difficulty in that area this year, and sometimes they're not the greatest team to screen against. Glenn Harper had some difficulties last week. Two punts blocked. Darnell Clash, the lone Argo back near his 15. Harper at his 33. Big charge was on again, but Harper got it away that time. Clash on the run. Clash with a bit of a seam, but he's met there by three Stampeders just at the 38-yard line. Led by Poli, the Stampeder tacklers that time. So Poli already a factor. And there is Bob Vespasiani. 13-yard return for Clash. Now the pressure is on Bob Vespasiani. I think he knows that he wasn't too uh, thrilled in our press conference yesterday. A little tart with the media, as a matter of fact, and uh, he knows the pressure's on. Four in a row when you've got a team that's supposed to be winning is kind of tough, and he'd like to get the guys straightened around. Interesting when you're all Canadians let you down. And Johnson, I think, is, is a combination of, uh, of that shoulder and not being very confident about it because he hasn't thrown the football terribly well in the games he has started. But Allen has not had a good season. And then uh, the fact that Bob Poley missed uh, four games. Well, you can when you're losing, you can find a lot of excuses to why you can't win a football game. But when it comes right down to it, as I chatted with Wally Buono, who's their defensive line coach before the game, they have lost some of the chemistry of that football team that they had last year with Ray Alexander, George Gilbert, Mel Jenkins, and a few of those veteran players not here anymore. They've lost that chemistry. They have to try and regroup it. And maybe tonight will be the night. It'll be an Argo first down, Toronto at the 38-yard line. And Gilbert Renfro in his second start for the Toronto Argo. Offensive weapons to work with. The receivers outside are Joyner and Dwight Edwards. Inside, the Smith boys, Daryl number one and Jeff number 88. The tailback, Gil Fennerty, and the fullback, Warren Hudson. On first down, Renfro will throw over the middle, completes to Daryl Smith. Well, this is a good way to start the football game. They run a three-man pattern to the short side of the feed. Now, feel all Renfrew has to do is read that inside safety. He goes out to the flat, so Daryl Smith hooks in between the safety and the linebacker, and it's an easy first down. Good throw. 14-yard pickup. Argo first down. They're on 52. Gil Fennerty flags down. Fennerty crashes across midfield. Down to the Calgary 53, met by Quincy Williams, number 91 for the Stampeders, and Bernie Morrison. 
Offside, Toronto number 80. Ken Joyner. Got a quick start that time. Joyner number 80. Yeah, Cut. tough to figure when you're a wide receiver and you're running the football. Not really smart to be offside. Well, Gil Renfro's had a full week of practice once again. He should be a little sharper, as we saw earlier, 14 of 35 last week against Hamilton. Not great statistics, but he got the job done, job done in the touchdown department. First and 15 Argos from the 47. Renfro will throw, gets it out for Hudson, met by Finley. Renfro's pass complete to Warren Hudson. Well, once again, there's another flag on the play as Warren Hudson's a little slow to get up. That's a good matchup they want. Uh, Toronto number 37. Called Warren Hudson as an ineligible receiver. That's interesting. Well, you know, he lined up. Well, what happens is you get too many guys up on the line of scrimmage, and uh, somebody didn't back a yard off the line, so you get too many guys. Had the good matchup, though. Running back against fullback, but Matt Finley did a nice job. And it is the receiver, ineligible or not, Warren Hudson, the injured Argo on the play. Twisted his knee in collision with number 37, Matt Finley, well, he former really Argo. Yeah, he really didn't even hit him that hard. It just uh, one of those things you turn the knee and catch it just a little funny, and it seemed to pop out on Hudson. I remember Dave Marler, the old quarterback of the Hamilton Ticats, he just stepped back in the pocket one time here at CE, and and nobody hit him, and he went down, was out for the whole year with a knee injury. That cost the Argos another 10 yards. It is first and 25 for Renfro now. Back at his own 30. Renfro scampered last week, will take off again, and has substantial yardage, though well short of a first down. He's almost halfway there. Bernie Morrison led the Stampeder Tacklers. Bernie Morrison's a guy who's been in around 10 years from the University of Manitoba. He originally started as an outside linebacker. They moved him to the inside. And he's only about 215 pounds, a little undersized in there. But in talking with Wally Buono before the game, he said, you know, if there's been one bright spot on our defense this year, which really has given up a lot of points, it has been the play of our middle linebacker, Bernie Morrison. Nice to be able to play a Canadian in there, too. A gain of 12. It is second. 12 more necessary for the Toronto Argonauts. Renfro will toss it this time. Some pressure. Releases. Far side. Picked off. Intended for Edwards. It is grabbed by David McCrary. McCrary, a nice interception. And down the sidelines. First turnover of the game goes to the Calgary Stampeders. There are no flags on the play. Well, that's Dave McCrary's second interception of the season and really a mistake by quarterback Gilbert Renfro. For second and long, Calgary sat back in a deep zone coverage, and you cannot run a post-corner pattern to Dwight Edwards like they were trying to do, and McCrary just sat back and had a free one. Played outfield. Yeah, he sure did. Well, we talked about them in the beginning, Ron Hopkins and Dave McCrary. They're two good corners. McCrary with 4-5 speed, he can really react to that football in a hurry. 33-yard return on the interception. Stampeders first down at the 42. Nowhere. That time for Tim Petros, number 12. But John, you know, as you look at this Toronto Argonaut defense, if you're going to put a game plan against them, really, it's not to run the football. Toronto's not too bad against the run, but, you know, on defensive secondaries, giving up, 9.5 yards every time they throw the football and teams are completing over 63 percent of their passes against that Toronto secondary so you would think Calgary would come into this game looking to throw the football every chance they get. Eight of three for Petros this is second and seven Stampeders right on the Argo 40. Warm on the throw has a man open on the wide side Larry Willis and he'll have the first down forced out inside the 30 yard line 29 by Reggie Pleasant. A 15-yard pickup. Yeah, that's great timing between Rick Warman and Larry Willis. He's their leading receiver coming in tonight with 20 catches on the season so far. But he just went down and ran a hook in front of Reggie Pleasant. The ball was in the air before he even turned, and you can't defend against that. So the Stampeders on a roll after a turnover. The interception by David McCrory. First down, Calgary. 25 of the Argos. This is Gary Allen. Back in form, at least on that play. He's close to the first down. Rick Ryan, the Argos safety, made the stop. Well, there's David McCurry on the sidelines. He's got the first turnover of the football game, and really that's one department that the Stampeders have been very poor in. They've given the ball up many more times than they've taken it away. In fact, they're a minus 11 in that category, but tonight getting off to a good start. 
They mark it as a Stampeder first down from the 13 of the Argo. Foreman gets some heat, finds a man open, and has a completion inside the five. 88, Wheeler. Ron Wheeler. Had a big game last week for Calgary. Good start tonight. Seven for 14 last week against Winnipeg. Seven for 114, I should say. Yeah, he was the one bright spot, really, in that loss to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, you know, they ran a crossing pattern there, and that's a long way for a defensive back to go. And Wheeler's a good target. Look for him to just get better and better this year. Good chance for the Stampeders to score here. They are second less than a yard to go from the three. And Allen gets a first down. They'll have three cracks at it from about the one. I'll tell you, Rodney Harding, number 77, really got some good penetration on that defensive line. And he tripped up Allen early. It looked like he might have an easy route into the end zone. But Rodney Harding, who really is their leader along that defensive front, made a pretty darn good play. Stampeders are rolling. No score on the board. Eight minutes, 30 seconds to play. The opening quarter at Exhibition Stadium. Harding has been busy up front for the Argos. First and goal to go. The Stampeders have the touchdown. Andy McVeigh, number 34. No flags are down, so the Stampeders do something they haven't done very frequently lately, and that is score first. Boy, that really takes the pressure off the defense, too. When your offense can take a turnover right down the field when you've been struggling all season long and convert it into a touchdown, Andy McVeigh, the rookie from the University of Toronto, gets the big touchdown. I do believe that's his first on the year. First of the season. He was the top rusher for the Stampeders in preseason, and they like him a lot. But McVeigh gives the Stampeders a 6-0 lead. J.T. Hay, who hasn't missed in a long, long time, makes it 7-0. J.T. Hay has 313 straight converts in Canadian football. 270 of those coming with the Calgary Stampeders. So the Stampeders jump out in front on the Argonauts by a touchdown early in the first. Gil Fennerty and the rest of the Argonauts. And a special teams player, Jake Vaughn. Vaughn has a touchdown. On a block punt earlier this season comes from an athletic family, Kay a Hall of Famer, and his mother, a great Canadian skier, Lucille Wheeler. Well, he was the first round draft choice of the Toronto Argonauts this year from Bishops University, who produced another great receiver in the Canadian Football League, Nick Araki, who's now playing for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And Kay makes Obi feel a little old. He played with his dad back in 63. The scoring drive impressively for the Calgary Stampeders in six plays. They covered 42 yards, a one yard run by Andy McVeigh. Two minutes and 51 seconds. And the key, as it always is, is take advantage of the turnover. David McCreary, the interception, and then a few plays later, they put it in the end zone. 7-0 lead. Keeps the defense off the field. Boy, those guys have played a lot of football in five games. The Stampeder defense oh, you're talking they about. Ever, yeah, and I'll tell you, it shows, too, because they're giving up uh, about 36 points a game. On the kickoff to Fennerty. One bounce, and Fennerty has nowhere to go. Smothered by McCreary. The first man upfield. And good speed shown there by Quincy Williams as well. He was right behind. Well, David McCreary with 4.5 speed over the 40-yard dash. They line him up on the outside of that kick cover team and say, turn yourself loose. And he made a great play. There is a flag, however, back at the Stampeder 50. Usually means they were offside. That helps on the David cover coverage. Yeah, <laughs> David didn't get a fast jump, did he? <laughs> Ross Perrier marshes it back to the 30 of Calgary. And they'll kick over. Calgary outside on the kickoff. No return for Gil Fennerty, so the Argos get a bit of a break here. They'll have five yards better field position, even if they don't get a return this time, presumably. Well, they should get a good return. J.T. Hay is, does not have the strongest leg in the league. He's a very accurate field goal kicker, but as a kickoff guy, he doesn't really boom it down towards deep down in the end zone. Quite a string going for the nine-year veteran, J.T. Hay. Kennedy would like just a little more room to maneuver. Fennerty stays inbound. 
Finds a bit of a seam. Benerty to the 55 and caught from behind. Darcy Cup, 32, cut up to Benerty, who is slicing his way through heavy traffic. McCrary was also there. Well, you know, John, they, they do a good kick to the sidelines to try and box him in, but he finds a little seam and brings it back out. They start at midfield. Super spot to start a drive. 33-yard return for Gil the Thrill Fennerty. Argos begin right at midfield. Renfro intercepted on the last Argo offensive sequence. Some pressure for Renfro. They let him out. And he has a completion to Tony Johns, number 23. Pass complete to number three, Tony Johns. Quincy Williams on the tackle. Well, he was originally a linebacker at the beginning of the season, but he's got the size to play that defensive end spot. He's six foot four, 230 pounds, has had some experience in the USFL, as have so many guys that have come to the Canadian Football League in the last year or two. Four sacks on the season. Second best defensive stats in that Calgary defense. Renfro handing out for Benerty, and he was kind of handcuffed there by Bernie Morrison and spun around. Gain of maybe two. Morrison and Jeffers to tackle two. Benerty still looking for a 100 yard game. Well, that's good defense by the Stampeders. You know, they played well on defense last week against the tough Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Of course, they lost 21 14, but 14 of Winnipeg's points came by blocked punts, so the defense really did an outstanding job against a high scoring team. And the rest of the points were on the kicking game. So the turnover set up Winnipeg last week. It is third down. Alisic at his 51. And deeper Hall and Allen. Hank angles for the corner. This is Richie Hall. He squirts through for a few. Well, you have to like number 27, Richie Hall at 5'6 and 160 pounds. He plays a lot tougher than his weight. Towers over Trevor Kennard. <laughs> the only guy in the league he does. First down. Trevor's going to be mad at you for that. I think he will be. Stampeders begin from their own 20. Gary Allen. Allen slicing through for better than five. Obi does not need another slow start like last week, does he? Well, no, he doesn't. They've, they've done that in every game this season, especially, you know, the opener against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. They had a horrendous first half and then came back and made a ball game out of it. But he would much uh, sooner see his club have a better first and second quarter. From the 25, second and five. Gorman has a man, it's Toner. And Toner turned one way, then the other. Coverage by Selwyn Drain. Well, he had to throw that away. Selwyn Drain was all over Marshall Toner and had the pass been on target, Selwyn Drain would have been going the other way with it. Spent the training camp uh, in training camp, as a matter of fact, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, was released because their secondary is so good, just no room for anybody to make that team. But Bob Abilovich saw him, saw what he liked, and uh, brought him into camp, and he's now starting. He has made a lot of changes in the secondary. Darnell Clash is new and back for this punt. Selwyn Drain new this year. Reggie Pleasant, Rick Ryan. And this is Harper to punt. Big charge. He gets it away. Bouncing for Darnell Clash. He had nowhere to go. Trapped near the 40. So the Stampeders. On the tackle by Finley, forced the Argos to begin back at their 40-yard line. It is Calgary in front of Toronto by a touchdown. 5:32 left in the opening quarter. They'll give some credit to this young man, Bob Poley, the veteran center, feeling some pressures to get that offensive line back on track. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on everybody on the O line. Uh, you know, we've been taking the heat to uh, getting the quarterback hit, and uh, you know that's our job and uh, keep him on his feet. And you know, I, I'm coming back and. Uh, you know, maybe it'll help settle some of them young guys down a little bit, and uh, hopefully we can block it a lot better than we have been. I said young. Polly asked me to say that. He's feeling yeah, a little old I this week. I couldn't believe you called him young. He's been around for 10 years. Uh, three of them in Calgary, seven with Saskatchewan. Nice guy. Argo first down, and flags are down. Lamont Jeffers 
as the Stampeder tackle on Tony Johns, number 23. Now, John, you and I, this is the third game this season we've seen of the Calgary Stampeders, and I'll tell you, Lamont Jeffers has played well in pretty near every game they've had. Holding Toronto number 56. Ian Beckstead, the center, gets called for holding. But retired last year, decided to stay down at Fort Lauderdale, was in business down there, but this year Leo Cahill was able to lure him back, and he's been their starting center in 1987. Would like to establish himself back in Toronto. He was talking to me tonight before the game. Would like to get involved in business here in the city and not commute back and forth from Fort Lauderdale. Although in the winter, I think you may think twice. I think you're right. Matt Finley is out. Darcy Cobb is in. So the Stampeders showing six defensive backs for an Argo. First down and 20 to go. Renfro will throw. If he gets it away. Nowhere to go. He stepped up to gain about five. Met by Harold Hallman and Quincy Williams. Well, Harold Hallman, you mentioned he has to get a little more active in this defense. Had 19 sacks, their big leader last year in that department. Only three sacks coming into tonight's game. A little under his production. Now he claims he's being double teamed. That may be true, but that should open up for somebody else. Well, one thing that if you look down the Stampeder defensive stats, it shows that Harold Hallman is ninth on that list of unofficial statistics kept by the coaches. So he is below his form as rookie of the year last year, no question. Renfro throwing on second and long. Almost a great catch for Ken Joyner. Ron Hopkins, 15, was with him all the way. Joyner went high, couldn't bring it down. Well, Ronnie Hopkins has had the most interceptions in that secondary this year with three, and he makes just a fabulous play there on Kenny Joyner. It was a good throw. Joyner up in the air, made the catch, but Hopkins over the top knocked the ball out, and, well, you teach the defensive backs, if you can't get there and hit the guy or intercept it, just knock it loose, and that's what he did. On third down, Alisic will kick it away. Alisic at his 20. Hall and Allen, the return team for Calgary. A boomer for Alisic. This is Gary Allen. Allen gets a return of close to three. And with three minutes left in the opening quarter, the Stampeders still lead the Argonauts by seven. Welcome back to Exhibition Stadium in Toronto. Stampeders lead the Argonauts by a touchdown first quarter. Hot, hot nights. That's what we should have worn tonight, Leif. Not Wish. jackets and ties. Well, it doesn't really matter. Now my shirt's so wet. Uh... You know, I think that will have an effect on the Stampeders. Uh, we did their game last week against the Bombers out there. Boy, it was about 40 degrees at the end of the game. Now they've got to come down here and play in 90 degree humidity. There's no question it'll have an effect. Warming over the middle, wide open Wheeler. Right on the numbers, and Wheeler can't hang on. The Stampeders will turn it over on down. He almost caught it twice, Leaf. Well, he should have had it the first time. You know, he, he, there's not too many times in the game that you come wide open like that, and Rick Warman saw it, read it, feathered the ball in there. He couldn't have done a better job throwing it, and but Ronnie Wheeler would like to have that over again because you don't get too many chances to come free. You better make the most of them. Glenn Harper. Has been rushed a little bit this week as well. Darnell clashed the lone man back for the Argos. I think they worked on their blocking protection for him this week. Good kick for Harper. Clash back at the 25. And really had nowhere to go. Stampeder punt coverage has been very effective so far tonight. Hopkins leading the way. A five-yard restriction on Clash's return. Darnell Clash had some flashes last week in that win over Hamilton of his punt returning abilities a couple of years ago. He was so good at it. But this year with coming back off the knee injury, he just seemed to have lost just a little bit of quickness. The numbers on Renfro so far, he's 50% for 21 yards. Has another strike for Joyner. Joyner close to seven as he cut back inside. Former Ottawa head coach Joe Moss back as an assistant in Toronto. Now he's working with the defense, which is really his specialty, and that's Mark Mabry there, number 44, the linebacker working with him. Now, I saw Mabry in the locker room yesterday. This guy benches 550. We've heard about that. <laughs> he is a mountain. I mean, there is muscle on top of muscle. This is second and three for the Argos. Renfro, little seam up the middle. Does he get the first down? He's close. 
Matt Finley, 37 for the Stampeders with a tackle. Well, the Stampeders did everything right on defense, but still will give up the first down. They had the short out blocked off. They had good pressure up the middle, and but just the good talents of Gil Renfro picked up the first down. And always liked Gil Renfro in Ottawa when he was quarterbacking last year. Of, of their quarterbacks in 1986, he had the best throwing motion, was the purest passer. He just needs some experience in how to read defense and how to run a football team. Argo first down. Renfro swings it out to Fennerty. He has another first down. Gain of more than 12. Bernie Morrison forcing him out. Good play for the Argos there. Fennerty on the dead run. Well, he gets the matchup he wants. Fennerty's being covered by Bernie Morrison, the middle linebacker, and give it to him quick, and that's what Renfro does, so you can use your running ability, because Bernie Morrison cannot stay with Gil Fennerty. Market a gain of 14, a first down for the Argonauts. At their own 52. Renfro, quick release again to Joyner. Hit, and then hit again. First hit by Richie Hall, 27. He bounced off, and then Vince Goldsmith finished off Joyner. He's a confident young man on the sidelines, Mr. Warman. Well, he maintains that there is not a controversy in Calgary amongst the players of who should be playing quarterback. Rick Johnson, of course, sitting out on their reserve list, but Rick Warman deserves to start after his performance in the final half last week against the Blue Bombers. On the field, second and seven facing Gil Renfro. There's the pressure. Renfro threw it away. No flags are down. Lamont Jeffers was in on top of Gil Renfro that, that time. First sack of the night for the Stamps. Well, Stan Peters using the blitz to try and bring some pressure, and number 24, Greg Peterson on a safety blitz, and Lamont Jeffers, number 95, who has been one of their real bright spots on defense, comes in, gets the pressure. Renfro cannot complete a pass. Argos have to give up the football. Stan Peters got through. They won't credit a sack on that one, but uh, he barely got it away. Olesic from his 40. Boomer for Alisic. This is Gary Allen. Five yards deep, and he'll give up a single point. So a 60-yard single for Hank Alisic on the final play of the opening quarter. Gets the Argonauts on the scoreboard. Stampeders lead it 7-1. Stampeder first down. They begin at their 35 after the 60-yard single by Alisic. And they begin with Tim Petros, who is going nowhere. Stats from the opening 15 minutes. Total yards very even, Leaf. Net yards very even as well. The game is even, 7 to 1. You know, I'm really surprised that Calgary keeps running on first down, and all the statistics would tell you to throw against Toronto time after time, but I guess they really want to try and establish that running game. All they're doing is finding themselves in second and long situations. This one being second and nine. Gorman gets some pressure. Gets away from the first man, but Kukla is there. Ran away from Marlon Jones, number 90, when Kukla got to him. Well, he did a good job. Marlon Jones with the initial pressure. Now he's flushed out, and number 68, Glenn Cook, picks up his third sack of the season. Now they were able to get him from the dispersal draft, and that's been a great addition for them. Boy, they do miss Gerald Bayless, though. He's still out with the injury, and hopefully he'll be back for that second half of the doubleheader next week in Calgary. But he was their real leader on defense, and they have not had him in there for a couple of games now. Darnell Clash on a third down punt from Glenn Harper. The charge was on again. Harper got it away. Clash at the 39. One man in front, he grabs a couple before being forced out by Larry Hogue, number 14. Well, John, there's no question after they watched the film of Winnipeg blocking two Glenn Harper punts last week, they've decided that they're going to try and get one themselves, and they came pretty close there with some good pressure. I suspect they'll keep going with it. Well, they didn't really get too close, and a lot of folks, but nobody really got there. Argo first down, they begin at their own 44 and a half. Gil Fennerty. Close to seven, Richie Hall. 
Well, those are the results you want to see if you're going to run the ball on first down. That time, they go across the left side with the veterans, Chris Schultz, Dan Ferroni, and Ian Beckstead, and they open an ice hole. Dan Ferroni back in the lineup after missing a couple of games with a hamstring injury. He's about 90%, but they really clean out the left side of that Calgary defense. Penalty, a good move for a couple more there. Uh-huh. Eight yards. This is great. Second and two. You can do whatever you want now. Penalty wants more. And should have the first down. In fact, he does. Across midfield, Quincy Williams, 91 for the Stampeders, leading the tacklers with Lamont Jeffers right behind. I mentioned that Bob Skipnick, number 64, is starting at right guard in his first game for the Toronto Argonauts. And at 6'2, 265 pounds, he's pretty good size. And originally the third round draft choice of the BC Lions in 1986, ended up in Montreal in the equalization draft. And now the Argos got him in the dispersal draft. So he's traveled around in a year and a half. A couple of other guys from that dispersal draft have too. Renfro on first and 10 looking for Dwight Edwards and overthrows him. David McCrary supplying the cover. The one I didn't quite understand was from that dispersal draft was the Finley deal and Ryan. Finley ended up in Toronto. Ryan ended up in Calgary. Then they swapped them about four days later. Well, I'll tell you why Rick Ryan ended up in Calgary. And Wally Buono told me before the game, he said, we didn't need him. But he was available, and he said, we knew if we took him in the dispersal draft, there were three other clubs, Calgary, uh, not Calgary, uh, Edmonton, Toronto, and someone else that wanted him desperately. So they picked him knowing they could make a trade, and they ended up getting what they wanted in Matt Finley. This is second and ten. I'm glad you informed me. Pressure on Renfro. He gets away from Hallman. Some time to throw over the middle. Good catch by Smith. And Smith can take off. He'll score. Daryl Smith as the Argos back to even. A bit of a broken play. The Argos capitalize. It is 7-7 on a 54-yard touchdown. Smith made it work. Well, he's not too happy. I don't blame him. A broken play kills you for seven points. And it just shows there's no substitute for speed because Gil Renfro just absolutely outrun Harold, outran Harold Allman. He gets out, breaks containment. Once that happens, you're in big trouble in the secondary. You can't stay with those guys all day long. Daryl Smith cuts back in. He had a big touchdown last week against Hamilton, and some great moves get him down to the end zone. Shook off a tackle from Larry Hogue, number 14. It was clear sailing for Smith after that. I'll tell you, John, this guy knows how to get in the end zone. In 1983, he led all NCAA teams in, with 18 touchdowns in college, so Daryl Smith knows where that goal line is. Chomick doesn't miss. The Argos are in the lead for the first time. Only by a point. There's a lot more action left tonight. And it is the Argos by one early in the second quarter. The Argo offensive line playing much better, according to Bob Obelovich in 1987. Reasons for that? Thoughts on the improvements from Dan Peroni, the Argo veteran. There's a few reasons why the offensive line is playing a lot better this year. The number one reason, I think, is the quarterbacks. They're younger and faster, I think, this year. They've been They've been saving us from a lot of sacks. They've been getting away, getting themselves out of their own trouble sort of thing. We've been releasing the ball a lot quicker. Uh, there's a lot of things. The, the play of the offensive line themselves are a lot better. We've got Chris Schultz. He's got a little CFL experience underneath him now. And it, you got uh, some pretty good guys, uh, young guys like uh, Jim Kardash and Jeff Watson and Bob Skimp. These guys are all good ball players. And we're having a we're having a lot more fun. I think the, all the experience of being together has helped. And uh, that's hopefully will lead us down the road to keep the sack numbers down. That's pretty much the only improvement, really. Uh, we haven't had as many sacks last year. We've been playing the same, really. Dan Peroni, and the Argos pretty good on kick cover that time. There is a flag down on the return of Andy McVay. Illegal block, Calgary number 91. You know, John, I think the key thing that Dan Ferroni did comment on was that they've got some guys with experience now. That, that had been really their problem in the past, and well, four out of the five starters tonight do have a lot of experience in Chris Schultz, Ian Beckstead, Kelvin Frunster, and Dan Ferroni. Bob Skep, the newcomer, but you can't, you can't replace experience when these guys get a chance to play together for a year. Scoring drive for the Argonauts. Only took four plays, 65 yards, less than two minutes, a 55-yard pass to Daryl Smith. Gave the Argonauts the lead. Well, that's what Gil Renfro does to you. You know, he kind of lulls you to sleep, and 
very mediocre for a couple of series and all of a sudden he comes up with a big play. And mobility the key back there for the offensive line. I mean, it's just a little bit easier when your quarterback is mobile. Oh, I think so. You look at the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and how many times you see Tom Clements just get the ball away or make just a little quick move to get away from the pressure and save a sack and end up maybe completing a pass. And it's that quarterback's mobility that can really make his offensive line look good sometimes. Freddie Dunbar, you saw right there, the tremendous trainer of the Toronto Argonauts. He's been around for a long time. And he was working on you this week. Uh -huh, I got the bad hand here, and Freddie give me some ultrasound treatment. Doran Major is out. That brings Jake Vaughn in to that Argonaut secondary. First down, Calgary deep in their own zone. They get to Gary Allen. Tough running inside, but Allen does well. Mark Mabry, the tackle for Toronto. Well, of course, deep in your own end is when you want to try and get some kind of rushing game going. Rob Smith, the left guard, had a pretty good block to seal it off as Allen broke to the outside. He's working on Marlon Jones. He's got a pretty good hammer lock on him there. But they pick up about seven yards in second and three. That's what you want in your own end. Try and grind it out. Get yourself a first down or two. Very close and does have the first down. He's across the 20. Mabry and Jones, along with Rodney Harding, number 77, the Argo tacklers. Allen is running very well tonight. Well, he's running a lot better. He sat out for a game. He had the ribs uh, really hurt. And Glenn Coca is the injured Argonaut player, but you know, your offensive philosophy really changes when you're backed up on your own and you're not really thinking field goals or touchdowns. What you want to try and do is maybe put two or three first downs together and just try and reestablish field position if you have to punt. I hate like heck to be stopped it deep in your own end and have to give up the football. Well, I'll be a little happier than he was about six minutes ago. The Argos into the lead by one. 10.56 to play till halftime. Bob Vespasiani has seen a little momentum shift the other way. A broken play touchdown by Daryl Smith. Kulka helped off by Freddie Dunbar. Two Argo injuries on two plays, both on defense. Well, they're a little thin on that defensive line, too. Greg Rainier, number 74, will have to come in and play. And it was a late cut last year of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Toronto picked him up as a free agent. He went to Western Montana, but he is in the ballgame now at that nose tackle position, number 74. But with the loss of Gerald Bayless and now Kuka, they are thin on that defensive front. Stampeder first down, just shy of their 20-yard line. Good fake by Warman. All kinds of time to throw. They call it a catch. They wave it off. The Argonauts, one of two teams in Canadian football, never to shut out the Calgary Stampede. Thought you might want to know that. Glad I saw it. Second and ten, Calgary. Warman had time on that last pass. Put it into the turf. mistake on this one it is a first down for the Stampeders out across the 35 on the reception by Larry Willis in front of Darnell Clash. Well wow, Larry Willis runs really an excellent pass pattern he's running a hook or an in and slide it into the middle but what he does is he goes about 20 yards downfield now he only needs 10 but that gives him a lot of room to work back to the quarterback keep that separation between himself and Darnell Clash and that's a great catch nice throw by Rick Warman now back to back first downs they've got themselves some breathing space. A gain of 18 has the Stampeders across their 35 at the 37. Andy McVay close to five more. Willie plus 32. We haven't mentioned his name frequently tonight. Well, they weren't too happy with the play of Willie Pless since he's come back into the lineup. Of course, last year, the Eastern nominee for Rookie of the Year. All Canadian, Willie Pless from the University of Kansas. A little undersized uh, for NFL standards, only 5'10", 210 pounds. So that's why he ended up in the Canadian Football League, a recruit of Leo Cahill. Gain of seven, second and three. Warman bounced that one. Yeah, I think he bounced it on purpose because number 26, Selwyn Drain, would have been going the other way in a hurry. Closest receiver for the Stampeders was 76, Marshall Toner. 
So the Stampeders turn it over on downs, third and three. How close have the Argos been to blocking Harper? Well, they've been pretty close, and, you know, they just send Darnell Clash back as the single man back, so you've got 11 guys up front, and I, I think it's a good scheme to try and block one of his punts. Early movement, flags are down. Not long, Clash at the 30 on the run. Argos moved early. Well, if that's the case, it should be a first down. Offside, Toronto number 32. Toronto offside. Willie Pless. Well, we just talked about Willie, and now he's front and center because that gives Calgary a first down. They only needed about four. Costly mistake by the Argonauts. Pless in his third game, he set out early games for the Argonauts. And a first down Calgary as a result of the last one. Petros straight ahead. Petros the ball carrier. Maybe four. Reynard, number 74, and plus 32, the tacklers for Toronto. Plus and both the tacklers. Calgary's put a pretty good drive now, aided by a penalty here to pick up another first down, but they have three on this drive. You know, Toronto's giving up over 400 yards a game defensively, so Calgary has to come into this game knowing that they can move the football. There's Greg Rayner, he's still in it. Nose tackle, doesn't really know where to go. Foreman to the far side, has his man, Larry Willis. Inside the 45 at the 44, Darnell Clash, the victim once more. Well, Darnell Clash gambled. He comes underneath Larry Willis, and he's going for the interception. He makes a mistake because that was a super throw by Rick Warman. Larry Willis has to catch it. Boy, Calgary's put a super drive together here. 14 yards on that reception. They began at their own seven-yard line. Penalty, that offside against Pless. Looming large right now because the Argos had slowed them down. This is Gary Allen on first down. Allen, room to the outside. Another first down for the Stampeders as Allen drags with him that time, Jake Vaughn. Well, things going a great deal better for the Stampeders. A 20-yard gain for Gary Allen that time. Well, watch the block by the left guard, Tom Spallatini. He kicks out number 72, Gary Moten, at the right side of your screen. And then Gary Allen is off and running 20 yards. And, boy, that's the Gary Allen of 1986 when he had 1,153 yards. He's having his best night of the season so far. On first down, Warman looks to the end zone, and it's picked off by Jake Vaughn. Vaughn with running room down the right side to the 36. Jake Vaughn, it was intended, I believe, for Tony Woodruff. And the tackle made by Andy McVay. Well, it was intended for Tony Woodruff and Jake Vaughn playing that middle safety spot. His rookie year just reads it perfectly. This is what a middle safety does. Sit back in a deep zone, read the pass pattern, read the coverage, and then make your break on the ball. He does a super job and thwarts the scoring drive out of Calgary Stampeders. 36-yard return gets the Argonauts in excellent field position for a first down as well. So the Argos hang out of the lead and stall a Calgary Stampeder drive. Key interception for Jake Vaughn, his first in the CFL against Ottawa. He blocked a punt and recovered it for a touchdown. He's made a very auspicious beginning to his CFL career. Argo first down there, 36, Gil Fennerty. Fennerty strung out, scrambles for a couple. Ron Hopkins, the tackle. You know, John, it's been really the biggest problem of the Calgary Stampeders this season is that giveaway takeaway category. They're minus 11. It means they've given the ball up 11 more times than they've been able to take it away from other teams. And, well, you know, they put such a super drive together, went about 60 yards, and then cough it up with an interception by Rick Warman. And, well, that's really what's killed them all season long. Second down and eight Argonauts from their own 39. Time ran down on Gil Renfro. 
You can hear in the background. Back count violation, Toronto number 14. He took one too many, Mr. Renfro, that time. Interesting to note that the Argos are the least penalized team, second least penalized team in the league. Second most, I should say, 358 coming into the game. This will be second and 13 Argos. Renfro on the money. And a first down for the Argos near the 50. Daryl Smith, the left slap back, the right slap back is Jeff Smith. A gain of 15. Well, Daryl Smith had a big touchdown catch, and now on a second and long, he's able to convert running the in pattern, and he gets underneath Lamont Jeffers, makes a nice catch, hangs on, and Donald picks up a first down, 15 yards on the play. Smith got four for 94 last week against Hamilton. Argos from there, 49 with the first. Gil Fennerty hesitates, then finds some room. And he is close to a first down. Matt Finley, the tackle. <laughs> Hank Alisic is listed as the third string quarterback for the Argonauts tonight. I asked him before the game if he thought he'd be able to do anything if he was called on. He said he might be punting on first half. I'd like to see Hank in there. That'd be good. Vince Goldsmith, the stop on Fennerty, but not before. He had picked up a first down. Over 60,000 yards punted in his CFL career. You know, in the little official programs that we get before the game, they have the guy's height, weight, and university he was from. I think he's the only guy in the league that's from high school, St. Joseph High School in Edmonton. He used to go to class and then come and practice in the afternoon after school. Absolutely right. Long intended for Edwards and out of bounds. David McQuarrie, the coverage on Edwards. Well, it's the second time they've tried to get Edwards in behind McQuarrie. Actually, the third time. One time, McQuarrie picked it off. and. The other two, he's been right with them, step for step, and what that means is the quarterback has to get just an absolutely perfect pass in there for Edwards to have any chance of catching it. Four minutes, six seconds left till halftime. But it Dwight, is the goes by one. Sorry, Lee. But Dwight last year, you know, he, he wasn't with any club, so he played senior football, and at the end of the season, the Argos picked him up and gave him a look. Now, you've got to really like it after 10 years to go back and play senior football. <laughs> You're right. This is second and 10 facing Renfro. Flags are down in the Argonaut backfield. Renfro can't get it to Edwards. I think it was tipped by McCrary. And there are flags all over the place. Toronto number 67. A little holding on Chris Schultz. Guy that big shouldn't have to hold on, should he? But I'll tell you, it's not a little holding when he does it. 6'8", 275. That's a lot of hand on somebody. Hand would go right around your waist. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's got to catch me first. Paul and Allen drop deep for Calgary. Alisic is in. There's no question Hank from the 50 yard line can put it in the end zone. I'm wondering if here if you try and angle it out of bounds and sacrifice and try and get a little field position. He kicked for a 60 yard single last time. He's looking for the angle this time but it rolls in. Allen will not really have a play on this football. He'll have to give up. Uh, you know, I think uh, Gary Allen, when he saw it bouncing, said, yeah, I hope it goes in the end zone. I'll give up the single. It's only one point. We trail 9-7, to seven and we get it out to the 35-yard line. That's a good play by Gary Allen. 63-yard single goes in the books for Hank Kalisic. And on the scoreboard, it is the Argonauts by two. 9-7, to seven, they lead the Calgary Stampeders with 3.25 till halftime. He's had a busy season. He started in Montreal, came to Toronto, then ended up as a Calgary Stampeder and a starter at that. In the trade for Rick Ryan, you talked about that. Yeah, well, Calgary needed a linebacker. Toronto needed a safety. It's a great trade for both teams. And Matt Finley coming back into Toronto from Lauren Park Secondary School. And in fact, that's the school that Tony Johns went to, too. So I know Matt's got a lot of friends at the ballpark tonight watching him play. 
<laughs> I don't know what that guy is called. Rick I Brace. Not, <laughs> I have not seen that person on the sidelines before at Exhibition Stadium. On first down, a quick five for the Stampeders. Petros has the game. Met by Willie Bless and Mark Mabry. Well, Calgary's convinced that they can run the football on first down. They really haven't had much success with it tonight. But that must be Bob Vespasiani's game plan. Well, better than five on that. From the 40 now. Warming up at 50% passing. The interception hurt. Lofts it over for Petros. What a great play by Willie Pless. Basketball knockdown. He was guarding the hoop. Well, at 5'10", he used every inch he had to get up and knock that ball away. It looked like it was going to be a good throw by Rick Warman. I believe he was trying to hit Ron Wheeler with that ball or Tim Petros, one or the other, but Willie Pless has the good range to get back there. Rodney Harding, third on the all-time sack list for the Toronto Argonauts in only three seasons, and he's hot in pursuit. He's their leading sacker this year with five. He can't quite get there. Warman just lofted that one in the air, intended it for Petros, and Willie Pless made a big play for the Argonauts. Two minutes, 40 seconds till halftime in Toronto. Toronto tonight it is a good night for football, a little sticky, but I think it's nicer to be here down by the lakeshore than maybe in an apartment up a little north of the city. Absolutely. Nice breeze coming in off Lake Ontario. And the fans that are here at Exhibition Stadium have seen a pretty low-scoring game in the first half, but some pretty good offensive football teams just have not been able to capitalize. Daryl Smith has given them, given them something to cheer about. So has Gil Fennerty. And really so has Gil Renfro as the Argos lead it by two, nine to seven. Third down punt. Glenn Harper with Darnell Clash, the lone Argonaut back. 25. And flags are down as Clash gets up to the 33. Jake Christensen led the Stampeder Tacklers. The official word from Ross Perrier. Illegal block. Toronto number 36. Don Bone. So Moen out of UBC gets caught for an illegal block that time. That sends the Argonauts back to begin from their 21. 2.25 till halftime. The Argos lead it by two. Stampeders looking to snap a four-game losing streak and move the ball effectively. A key interception by Jake Vaughn stalled the last major Stampeder drive. Gil Fennerty for a couple. Quincy Williams, 91 for the Stampeders. And Bernie Morrison, the veteran in the middle, made the tackle. The Stampeder defense has been pretty solid tonight. Well, they, they had a rough start this year. And last week, I think they turned a corner in that game against Winnipeg, and they've carried it over into tonight's game. And it's really a broken play, beat them for the one touchdown. But other than that, they've played well. Second down and eight. Argos. Renfro and Hallman get together. Hallman wins. 99. Harold Hallman has his fourth sack of the year. Last year's 1986 Shenley Rookie of the Year, Harold Hallman, number 99 in the second year out of Auburn. They run a stunt, and he's able to come free. He and number 91, Quincy Williams, run a little loop pattern there, and he gets in on Renfro. No chance to get the football away, and boy, do they need him on defense to be active for them to have success. Clear sailing for Holman. Forces a third down kick away situation for Hank Elisic. Elisic back at his goal line. Paul and Allen. Here they're 45 for the Stampeder. Gary Allen calls for it. Across the 50, good run for Allen inside the 45 of the Toronto Argonauts. 15-yard return, a 44-yard Hank Elisic punt. You know, John, statistician Bob Layden just handed me something that the Calgary Stampeders, out of 15 possessions here in the first half, have run the ball 12 times on first down. Now, that's getting pretty predictable. 
you know, this is time where the spotters upstairs have to recognize these things and say. Number 34, major foul, unnecessary roughness, Calgary number 34. Danny McVeigh getting called for that infraction, but now is when the spotters up in the booth have to say to themselves, okay, we've run the ball 12 out of 15 times on first down. Let's maybe go with some play action. We might be able to freeze a linebacker and get a big play out of it. I think that must have been after the play. I didn't see there was a little scuffle down there after the return. Andy McVeigh and Jim Kardash were kind of dancing a little bit, and he gets called for it. That's a lot of yardage right there. That is a lot of yardage. About 40 yards from where they would have had the football. 25 yard penalty goes against the Stampeders. Rough play charged against McVeigh. Stampeders, who had good field position, are now back in the shadows of the goalposts. That's when you're Andy McVeigh, you go to the end of the bench and you try and get behind that water bucket so Chris Pagliazzi can't find you. Where is he down there? I can't find him. I was yeah, looking down there. He's behind the water bucket. Oh, yeah. First down, Calgary, from their 26. Warm on the throw. As a man open, Willis, good catch, gets away from the coverage after that. Down the sidelines, Willis still going. 89, Larry Willis stops once more, and finally, I think out of exhaustion, goes down at the 17-yard line. Willis did it all himself. After making the catch, a 67-yard pickup for the Stampeders. And that wipes out any penalty infraction. Watch again. Well, Reggie Pleasant makes the gamble. He tries to come underneath Larry Willis, and I'll tell you, this is a super catch. He goes up high in the air, fights for that football, takes it away, stays in bounds, and now he's off and running. And I'll tell you, Larry Willis is one of the more exciting receivers in the league when he catches that football. Stampeders have been waiting for that to happen for some time. The pitch to Allen on first down, and he's going nowhere in the grasp that time. That's Marlon Jones. Well, John, you know, I think it's really important for the Stampeders to score on this drive. You know, they had the one good drive, came away with nothing, and now, once again, after the big 67-yard play by Larry Willis, they, they're in great position to put some points on the board. They have to score. They're going to get a little dejected. It'll be second down, Stampeders. Can to go. At the 17. 57 seconds left on the clock, first half. And a timeout for Bob Vespasiani. The Stampeder bench. They'll be talking about that running game you were talking about late. Well, I, th I think they're going to say, Rick, you got second and ten. You better come up with something good here and don't throw an interception. We want to get three points at least and hopefully go into the locker room with the lead at halftime. Wouldn't they give them an idea here? They wouldn't just say, come up with something good. No, no, no. They Poor go. Warman needs a little help. Uh, they, 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 they'll, I'm sure they call the play for him. On the sidelines, J.T. Hay warms up if this doesn't work. There are flags down, Warman over the middle, and the Stampeders will score depending on where the infraction, or how the infraction is called. Ron Wheeler is in the end zone. And we better wait on this one. Procedure, number 89, Calgary. Larry Willis calls the procedure. Ron Wheeler made the end zone. The Argonauts get another shot to stop these Stampeders. Well, it was a turnover on the last series. Now a procedure penalty on Larry Willis and the Stampeders time and time again keep shooting themselves in the foot. A great pattern by Ron Wheeler to beat Gary Bolton to get into the end zone, but it means nothing. And that's frustrating for a young quarterback like Rick Warman. Now he's seen two drives go out the window. You start pressing at this point. They're the penalty situation. Only five for Calgary, but boy, they, that was a crucial one right there. Cost them seven. So this is second and 15, Stampeders from the Argo 22. Warman has to get it done here. 48 seconds left, and Warman goes down. The Stampeders will have to send in JT Hay as Willie Pless and Rodney Harding got through to deck Rick Warman that time. Big charge. Well, that's really frustrating, too. The Toronto Argonauts know exactly Rick Warman has to throw the football. They bring the blitz, which they don't do that often. But that time, it pays great dividends as Willie Plus gets in for the sack. And that's been a real problem area for the Argonauts this year. Only eight sacks uh, as a team coming into 
tonight's game, but two times tonight they've been able to get to Rick Warman and a big one right there. JT Hay has been good on seven of 11 field goals, 63%. His longest from 56, this one is good. As JT poked it through from 39 yards away. Stan Peters into the lead by one, 10 9. Dying seconds, second quarter. Be with us at halftime for our halftime show with Jim Van Horn. Special guest back at TSN Control, Al Bruno, the head coach of the Tiger Cats. Yeah, this will be interesting. Fans from the stands get to come down and ask Al a question. They might ask him what happened to his What Tiger happened Cats? when Tony Johns went over the goal line last week to beat their to beat the Tiger Cats? Maybe Al's luck ran out against the Argonauts after last year. He won the bigger of those two games, didn't he? Al would much sooner win uh, November than in, in uh, July. Renfro gets away from a rush of Bellabo. 19 seconds left. First half as he steps out of bounds. Ticats will head into Saskatchewan this week, and I'm sure the Rough Riders will know that they've been in town. Well, Saskatchewan had that big win in Ottawa last week, so they come home and hopefully a good turnout at Taylor Field to cheer them on. It's a big game for both teams. 18 seconds remaining time for about three plays. Plenty of time for Gil Renfro to get in shape for a Lance Chomick field goal. Renfro well over the head of Dwight Edwards. We flip to second and ten. Stan Peters marched 42 yards and capped off that march with a three-yard touchdown by Andy McVeigh. An Olympic single made it seven to one. Daryl Smith, a 54-yard touchdown pass from Gil Renfro, gave the Argonauts the lead for the first time. Renfro takes a hit after the completion. He has a first down, but Renfro was decked. Joyner has the catch. Argonauts, yeah, and Argonauts take the timeout right away because Joyner, of course, not out of bounds. Six seconds left. Good play. And you know, it just shows the great speed of Gil Renfro. He was uh, harassed there in the pocket, able to roll out and finally find someone open. And you just can't cover the guys downfield for eight, nine seconds. Not possible. Kenny Joyner, their leading receiver, makes a big catch. And I'd say about 10 more yards, and they're in good shape for Lance Chomick to come in the game and try and get them ahead. There you see Obi yelling, get field goal team, you get ready. 10-9, Stan Peters in the lead. Six seconds on the clock till halftime. Time for one more for Gil Renfro. If he can get it out of bounds. The joiner far side, and he steps out. So Chomek will get his chance with two seconds left. I'll tell you, that's a good job by Gil Renfro. He knew he wanted 10 more yards, so he just said, Kenny, you go down just past that first down marker. Turn to the outside. The ball's going to be right there. We're going to get three points out of this thing. Jomek comes in. Well, he's got the new holder in Mike Saraska and a new center, Ian Beckstead. Normally did not snap. Glenn Keeble was the snapper early in the season, so this threesome has had to do a lot of work this week to try and get the timing and coordination down. Chomek puts the Argos back into the lead. Last play field goal ends off the first half as Chomek is good. On the field goal try, his 10th field goal of the season, the Argos out in front of the Calgary Stampeders by two at halftime. Right now, let's go back to TSN. had one tremendous drive when they started from their own seven yard line and took it all the way downfield but Jake Fon's first professional interception.
squelched that drive, but Calgary moved the football pretty well, and, and I, you know, I was impressed with Gil Renfro, the way he took it those last 18 seconds, got themselves in field goal position, and Chomick put them ahead 12-10 at the half. Could be a big three points as the night wears on. We don't expect the Stampeders to be shut down completely the rest of the way, but it is the Argonauts by two as we begin the second half in Toronto. J.T. Hay will kick it off for Calgary. Deep for the Argonauts, you'll see Jake Vaughn, number 24. And number one, Daryl Smith. <laughs> well, a big That's offense. what we need, Lee. Oh, That's a big offensive lineman. You know, they take a beating tonight. Some of those guys will lose about 10 pounds. And, of course, the Stampeder's not used to the humidity, and we'll see if that's a factor in the fourth quarter. One bounce. Jake Vaughn. To the 41. Matt Finlay leading the Argonaut tacklers. Stampeders will have good field position from the 41-yard line. And that stat is reasonably close as well. Warman, 6 of 12, 133. Renfro, 9 of 16, 145. Well, he had a couple of big completions late in that second quarter to Ken Joyner to set up that field goal. Argonaut first down, 41, their own. Renfro has time and a man, but it's picked off. Morrison, Bernie Morrison. Wow, they're saying he trapped the football. Boy, it sure looked like he picked it off. Bernie Morrison with good range from that middle linebacking spot. Daryl Smith couldn't squeeze the football, but the 10 year veteran was right over the little play action, which is a good play to call on first down against Calgary. Try and hold the linebackers. Didn't really fool Bernie. He got over there, and of course, from our angle, it looked like you he can't tell. Able, no. Looked like he was able to pick it up, but of course, the referee's much better view. Second and 10. Renfro gets some pressure and finds Smith again, but Smith can't make the catch. Big collision down there. Daryl Smith on the bottom of the pile. Two Stampeder defenders right with Smith. Well, you could see number 32, Darcy Kopp, who they bring in as the sixth defensive back in passing situations. He just had a, a, a tremendous opportunity to put the lumber on Daryl Smith, and as he came down for the, with the football, Darcy Kopp just unloaded number 32, made a good, clean hit. Nothing wrong with this, but back-to-back -back plays where Daryl Smith has not been able to hang on to football. That's that's good play from your defensive backs. Richie Hall too right there as well. Richie Hall. Oh and Smith hurt a knee I'm sure going down. Smith's knee jammed into the turf. Daryl Smith. There are two players on well, the you, turf at the 40. Yeah you know Richie Hall got his legs jammed underneath. You can see it just in and he's fallen over top of Daryl Smith. They had trouble separating those two. Richie Hall at 5'6", 160 pounds, really takes a beating out there. Last week, you know, in that game, John, we saw him about two or three times have to be helped off the field. He's up again, all right. The next maybe a little sore shaking it around, but I'll tell you, at 160 pounds, he plays and hits like a 200-pounder. He's got a big heart. And Daryl Smith is under his own power as he heads to the Argonaut sideline. His knee really looked like it might have been seriously hurt, but apparently not. Richie Hall, Daryl Smith, both get a hand and both off the field for a play at least. Well, you know, if you're a defensive coordinator as Dan Daniel is for the Calgary Stampeders, you have to appreciate the way his defensive backs go and fight for that football and make the hit because I'll tell you, next time Daryl Smith comes down through the middle, he'll be thinking about number 32, Darcy Cobb. On third down, Alisic from his own 27 for Allen or Willis. This is Gary Allen chasing it back to the five-yard line. Turns it into a pretty good return as he crosses the 21. Moten, the tackle for the Argonauts. 16-yard return, 64-yard boomer for Alisic that time. Well, that was some punt by Hank Alisic, and you know what an added dimension that gives to your offense. You know, if you're struggling and not moving the football, when you can have a guy that kicks it 64 yards down and pins the team deep in their own ter territory, that's your big offensive weapon. I find it amazing that Daryl Smith is moving around on the sidelines with such mobility. Looks like he'll be back soon. First down, Stampeders, and they're 21. This is Gary Allen. Not much that time. Caught from behind by Harding, 77, and Moten, 72. Calgary's been so predictable on first down tonight. Granted, they're deep in their own territory, but 
just once I'd like to see some play action on first down and maybe get an isolation a good matchup Gary Allen on one of the outside linebackers Gary Moten or Don Moan Allen more than halfway to a hundred yard game second and seven Foreman has a man over the middle Wheeler number 88 met by flat and a flag goes down Bearing, Toronto number 44. Mabry, I believe, for Spearing. Okay, watch this now. We got second and long. Let it roll. Toronto's playing his own defense. There are your three linebackers circled. Now they're just going to drop back in a nice zone, and then Wheeler, the tight end, is going to come out, find the open spot. It's a good read by quarterback and receiver because if the linebackers are going to drop that deep out of there, you've got to take advantage, come underneath it. Wheeler makes the good catch. They pick up a first down plus a roughing penalty. That's a nice way to start your series. 15 yards in the spurring call. Stampeders first down at their 52. Good fake to Allen. To the outside for McVay. And McVay close to a first down. Good move by McVay. McVay will be at least a yard short. Willie Pless forced him out. Well, John, this is what I've been talking about. Just, just super. Play action on first down, and now you get a great matchup. Andy McVay on the linebacker, and, you know, he picks up eight yards, and it's just a good offensive football. You've run the ball so many times. Go to that play action, and, and you're going to have success with it. Richie Hall, he's smiling. He's all right. You can't hurt this guy. 5'6", 160, what a killer. you got to go low on him. Second down, two to go, Calgary. Allen has the first down. There's your trainer, Lee. I'll tell you what, I like Freddie. He's been very good to me over the last few years. <laughs> well, he was good to you this week. Sure you hurt like your little it. finger and you had to go see Freddie. <laughs> Freddie, one of the best in the business. And you know, that's such an important part of a football team. You have to be able to rely and have confidence on your trainer. When he tells you that an injury is okay, you can go full blower on it. You have to rely on his expertise. And of course, you ask any Argonaut, and they'll tell you that Fred Dunbar is one of the best and a great guy to boot. Now, how long did he tell you to stay off the tennis court? A couple more days. <laughs> Good fake Warman. And he isolates Petros, who will have a first down. Tim Petros caught by Doran Major, 27 for the Argos. Stamps rolling again. Well, this is what I've been talking about. And uh, they've recognized this up in the spotter's booth. They said, now we've run the ball so much on first down. Play action's got to work. And here you go, back-to-back -back plays. they got eight yards with Andy McVeigh, And now a first down with Tim Petros. You just freeze those linebackers and defensive backs just enough that you get that matchup. You get the guy the ball quickly. He can pick up some good yards. First and 10, Stampeders. Argo 38. Toner. Number 76. Don Mullen made the stop on Toner. The tempers are active in the heat at Exhibition Stadium, Toronto. Greg Raynard, of course, forced into play when Glenn Kukla was injured. He's the backup defensive lineman. They are short in that department, but once again, a good throw by Rick Warman, and he's been impressive tonight on his drives put together. This is the third really good solid drive that they put together tonight. A nice catch by Marshall Toner. They mark it a gain of nine. It'll be second and one. Stan Peters inside the Argo 30. Warman himself, he'll have the first down to the 25. John, you know, the worst thing an offense can do is become predictable. It just makes it so much easier for the defense. You know, run first down, pass second down. They know exactly what they want to do. And, and now they've been able to put the Toronto Argonaut secondary and defensive line a little off balance. They're not quite sure exactly how Calgary's going to attack them. Orman has a hot hand third quarter. Four of four. And the Stampeder march continues. Can't get any better than that. Ten of 16 for 173 on the game. Mike Palumbo, the right guard, is the injury player. We saw him with that big ice bag on the head and looks like a knee injury. Pat Clayton, who's been a trainer in the league for many years, out to take care of him. But I don't think it's cramps. You know, you would obviously think about cramps occurring in the second half with this humidity, but I think that's strictly a, a mechanical problem with the knee. Backup offensive lineman Rob Smith and John Coughlin. Interesting to see who Vespasiani goes to here. Likely. Possibly Coughlin, number 56. Mm -hmm. 
Coughlin moves in. Foley's the big captain out there, isn't he? 10 minutes, 14 seconds to play. Third quarter. It is the Argos leading by two. The Stampeders threatening at the Argo 30 or 26 yard line. You know, Rick Warman has had some success in 1987, took them to that big win in the opening game of the season in Saskatchewan with the final touchdown pass to Larry Willis. Had some success last week against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers where he was 22 of 49. Had three interceptions but threw a touchdown pass. Stan Peters thinking over a first and ten. Palumbo being attended to on the sidelines. You know, he was originally a Calgary territorial pick in 1984 was Mike Palumbo and Ended up with the Montreal Alouettes. Now came back in the dispersal draft. Gary Allen. Allen to the 20. This guy's spearing, man. He's spearing all day. <laughs> Somebody's looking for a spearing call down there. Gary Allen takes a beating and we're gonna get a good look at him running with the football. What the Calgary offensive line does is get they, they push the Toronto front three back and Tim Petros gets a good block and it really doesn't look like a, a great running play but you know they pick up six yards just because they push everybody back. It doesn't look fancy but it's very effective. Allen stats on the night going into the game he was slumping a little bit with a 3.3 yard per carry average. He wears that uh, handkerchief over the head under the helmet. I think you might have to squeeze that thing out. A little perspiration tonight. <laughs> On the other hand, you'd like to go into the game with that in an ice bucket. It might be a little wet and feel pretty good. Second and four, Stan Peters just outside the Argonaut 20. Last ball. Who comes up with it? Warman is after it. Petros can't get to it. It's still loose. Kalarenko. He doesn't have it. Looks like an Argo football. Don Moan had a couple of shots at it. Moan finally came up, and the ball just squirted out in the exchange between Poli and Rick Warman. Now, hang on. There was a flag down. Offside, Toronto. <laughs> well, they were coming with the blitz, John, and Willie Pless was up the middle, Don Moan as well, and somebody got a little edgy, and, well, you know, Calgary has not had any breaks in this game. They finally get one. It looked a little bit like rugby out there as they chased after a bouncing ball. The Stampeders also get a first down. And it will come at the 15 of Toronto. So all the fun and all the cheering for not in Toronto. Again. Well, there you see a bad exchange from Rick Warman. He steps out and really, you know, when he steps out, he draws the, the Argonaut defense offside. I'm not so sure that's not a legal procedure, but... Nevertheless, a big break for the Stampeders. They retain possession, have a first down. First down, 10 to go. Calgary, Toronto 15. This is McVay. He is met heartily by Harding, 77. Nice bit of alliteration by John Wells there. <laughs> heartily by Harding, and he sure did. Met him right in the hole. Andy McVay saw a little opening, tried to cut back, but good pursuit down the line of scrimmage by 77 Harding. Good job by Greg Rayner, too. He almost had a shot at him. But second and eight, I think the Toronto Argonauts should come with the blitz again. They were successful last time. 8.36, third quarter. It is the Argos by two at 12 to 10 on the Stampeders. Calgary, second down. Seven to go from the 13. Warman in trouble, releases in a hurry, and it's picked out by Harding. Harding will not get all the way to the end zone. He'll run out of steam, I believe. Johnson, or rather, Warman over to try and make the tackle. Finally, Petros gets back. Just too big to go that far, but the interception gets the Argos in great field position. Tim Petros makes the touchdown saving tackle. Well, they better get the oxygen mask ready. Big turnover. And no flags are down. Rodney Harding carries it 71 yards. The Argos threaten again. Turnover for the Argos. We don't have to slow it down on this interception. Lee no, Harding no, right slowing up. Good pressure from Willie Plus there. Rod Harding, this is his second interception as a professional football player. Had one last year. And 
You're right, John. This is not slow motion. This is Rodney Harding at full speed and cuts it back in. And I mean, he wants the end zone, but there's just no way. Get that oxygen mask ready because he's going to be taking some deep breaths. It is an Argo first down on the pitch to Fennerty. The reverse to Dwight Edwards. Has some room to the far side. Edwards. Good score. No. Stopped inside the 10. Rodney is still <laughs> breathing on the sidelines. A 20-yard pickup on the reverse. Greg Peterson oh, finally forcing Edwards out. Well, Rodney's taken half the oxygen out of Exhibition Stadium here, but this is what I like. You know, some excitement in the game, and they've got the big turnover. Now come with the big hitter and big play and try and score one. They don't get the touchdown, but a great run and a good setup by Dwight Edwards here. A little move to the outside, but, you know, this is exciting football. This is what the fans came to see, and, and I'm enjoying myself watching this guy to football. Number 15, Ron Hopkins, is the injured Stampeder being intended to by Pat Clayton right now. Well, they don't want him out of the lineup. He's been their best defensive back so far this year, Ronnie Hopkins. Darcy Kopp will come in for at least a play to replace him. Richie Hall will move to the corner. Dwight Edwards. Big 20 yards on the reverse. He hasn't had a catch so far. And more problems for Coach Bob Vespasiani. Again, the turnover. Stampeders had only one in the first half. And now the big return for Rodney Harding. 71 yards in the interception of Rick Warman. And that sets up the Argonauts deep in Stampeder territory. Well, you know, let's face it. The difference in this ballgame tonight is the Toronto Argonauts have made the big plays, and the Calgary Stampeders haven't been able to do so. The uh, interception to Rod Harding, the interception by Jake Vaughn, and those are, those plays cost the Calgary Stampeders at least six points, a couple of field goals, and the Argonauts, on the other hand, have taken advantage of their opportunities and, and might do so here. Good point on the field goals. They didn't necessarily have touchdowns written all over those drives, but certainly six, they were in field goal right now. You know, six points, and they'd be ahead 16-12 right now. So, you know, you only get so many chances to score in a game, and you, you, you better take advantage of about half of them. First and goal, Argonauts from the seven. Renfro looks to the corner. No catch, no flag. Hold uh, covering. Now you have to like uh, Gil Renfro. He saw Ron Hopkins out of the game. Larry Hoke has to move out to the corner. I mean, Larry Hoke can play the corner. He, he's a good football player, but still go after the guy out there. He hasn't played there yet this season. And put your fast guy on him and try and get a good matchup. They do, but Larry Hoke's equal to the task. He's been around five years. He knows how to play this game. Joyner heads to the left side. He'll try again. Second goal to go. Argos. Stampeder seven. This time, Fennerty wide open. No doubt about that one. Fennerty has the touchdown, and the Argos increase the lead. Eight points down. Well, no question about this. A little pick for Gil Fennerty. Darcy Kopp was supposed to get out and try and cover him, but no way he could fight through the, the pick by Jeff Smith, and Gil Renfro saw it quickly, gave him the ball quickly, and that's good offense. 18 to 10, Argos leading the Stampeders. Chomek lines up with Sharoska holding for the convert try. A nine-point advantage for the Argonauts on the Stampeders. The Harding interception and a 71-yard return of it. Big story of that scoring drive for the Argonauts. Third quarter, lots left. Petros, Harding leading that Argo defense again. Well, Rodney Harding's having himself some kind of second half. He just slants down from the defensive end position, is not blocked. And if you're a running back, I mean, you expect to get a few yards further before you have to get hit. That's not fair. No, the hole should be a oh, little no, bit yeah. bigger than that. T Tim, you better have a talk with your right side. Supposed to have a line of scrimmage anyway, and after that you may be on your own. Warman on second and ten. Sidelines. Toner well over his head. Well, he, he hit the yard, guy holding the yard marker right in the back of the head. Now this ball just gets away from a little perspiration on the hand. Maybe watch this over top of Marshall Toner and 
Fish was trying to get out of the way. Bach, he gets it right in the beak. Dangerous down there at times. I'll tell you what, it's tough holding that thing up. The big guys running at you, quarterbacks throwing at you, you never know what's going to happen. You still have to keep a spot. That's right. Harper. This is Clash at the 40, bobbled it, hangs on. He was caught by the face mask. Well, no flag is down. No flag is down. Kind of looked like it must have Actually, been a shoulder pad. Larry Hogue went over to apologize, so he might have got him by the face mask and didn't get caught. Hogue went over and said something to Clash. And Sure, it's a perfect night to come down and watch a football game here on the shore of Lake Ontario. The Argonaut fans, well, I think they've been treated to a pretty good football team. Their team ahead by nine points here in the third quarter. Lots of reasons. Vanity is one. Going nowhere this time. Larry Hogue, the tackle. These two teams meet on Sunday, August 2nd in Calgary. A back-to-back matchup. Yeah, you know, Calgary just had that with Winnipeg. Now they have it with Toronto. And I don't think the players really like that too much. You know, it, it's kind of really, it, it becomes a little dull and dreary practicing for the same team two weeks in a row. Especially if you lose number one. Game one. Second and eight, Renfro will throw. Edwards wide open, couldn't get to it. Renfro slightly off the target. McCrary covering on Dwight Edwards. He was streaking, though, wasn't he? But I'll tell you what, David McCreary, the corner, is very lucky. He's down here. He's down at the bottom here covering Dwight Edwards, man on oh man. Now, now he's going to come up and try and jam. Edwards gets around. He's home free, but Gil Renfro can't get the ball into him. Watch this now. Man to man, they're locked up. And boy, you can't make a mistake when this, when you're in this kind of defense. He bites up and lets him inside, misses the jam, and that's six points if he catches it. It forces Hank Elizick to kick once more. He's been booming him tonight. 60 yard single, 63 yard single, 164 yard punt, and this one not quite as deep. On the run and fumbled by Richie Hall. Somehow he grabbed a couple. Richie Hall on my job. John, it's, it must be frustrating for Calgary because in the third quarter, you know, they, they, they had a good march going. They're doing some good things on first down with that play action. And, you know, really, they, they, have, they can't get frustrated or get down. They're only trailing by nine points. Just keep doing what you've been doing, the play action, and get Gary Allen going. And, you know, you can get back in this game. But the way they're walking out in the field, you know, I think they're looking like this has been a long night in the heat, and it's only four minutes left in the third quarter. There's a lot of football to go. Oh, yeah. But and if you I, relax at this stage of the evening, you could get hurt. Tell you what, they're walking around pretty slow here in the third quarter. No doubt about it. Hot and humid. It would affect the western Stampeders from the Rocky Mountains a little bit more than the Argonauts who are a little more used to this. Well, sure it would. Uh, you know, we're talking to the coaches. Uh, th on the weekend, they had thunderstorm and hail and everything. It got really cold out there. So when you're practicing in that, and all of a sudden you have to come down and play in the humidity, I mean, it's really difficult to do it. You can last for about a half, but then some things start to happen to you. I don't care how much water you drink. They say, you know, drink all the water, get the fluids going. You're still going to feel the fatigue. Is quickly for Petro, short of the first down. Only second and five, Calgary. Well, he plus the tackle. Yeah, that's why he was uh, rookie of the year in the East last year because it's a great fake by Rick Warman. I mean, he he has everybody standing still. Nobody knows where the ball is, but Willie Plus hangs on his guy, Tim Petros. He's got him in coverage, and he's right there. Sure tackle, and only a four-yard gain. That's pretty good defense. Make this second and six. Stampeders from their 31. Good play to Wheeler over the middle. He has a first down and much more. 
Reggie Pleasant the tackle. Wheeler picks up 22. Well, Big target, Wheeler. Yeah, and that's the second time they've got what they wanted. They, they just release uh, off what they call a slow block. Wheeler blocks and then releases over the middle. Let the linebackers get the deep drop. And, of course, he's such a huge target, as you said, John. He's easy to find and makes a good catch. And that's a big first down because Calgary wants to try and reestablish something. First and 10, Stampeders at the 53. Warman time. And they call it a catch at the 40 for Woodruff. Oh, no doubt about that. He made the catch. Came back to the quarterback, and uh, that wasn't a trap. The officials are going to consult on it, but no question, Tony Woodruff made a great play. He drove Darnell Clash really deep. Comes back to the football, and that's good offense. A little slow with the official signal signal on this one, but that's good throw it. by Warman, and it's, it is down low and away. But there you see Woodruff. He comes in and he gets the hands underneath it. That's a great catch. Market at 17. First down. Stampeders. Toronto 40. 2.24 left, third quarter. Tough slugging inside for Gary Allen. Met by Gary Moten, 72. Allen has been punished a little bit tonight. Missed last week with bad ribs. Well, he's getting up slower and slower after each carry. And of course, they need him healthy. You said he missed a game. And they have to have him in that lineup. I don't think he's feeling too well right now. Gain of four, second and six, Calgary. Flags are down. Stampeder backfield. Warman gets it away for Allen. Another flag in the Argonaut backfield. Allen stopped short of the first. Mark Mabry the tackle. Looks Calgary like the number 57. Bob Foley. Another flag. Well, let's see where they spot that. A little flag downfield as well, wasn't it? An eligible receiver. Toronto number 36. Uh, should 30. be offsetting penalties. Uh, illegal contact on Don Moan, the outside linebacker, holding on Bob Poley. I suspect to play the down over again. Poley gets off the hook. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that happens to the good guys, and he's a good guy. From the Regina Rams. A couple of his teammates still playing. Brian Illibrin. Roger Alday in Saskatchewan. He spent seven in Saskatchewan. The days of the big uh, Rough Rider Hogs, they call that offensive line. Pretty good one. Yeah, Laurie Skullrude. And He's still there. Yeah. So it is second down. Seven to go, Calgary. Warman, deep drop, another flag. Holding would be the indication. And Wheeler wanted an interference call at the other end, but uh, Holding no call. I'm not so sure he didn't uh, have a claim there. Rocco Romano that time. Their first round draft choice in the 1987 draft. Rocco Romano working on number 90, Marlon Jones. There he is, and that's uh, two points for a takedown because he hogtied him. No question about that one. <laughs> so once again, penalties and turnovers hurt the Stampeders. They were in good scoring position. Now they find themselves second and 16, which is a tough, tough thing to convert. And Argo secondary can drop deep. It does. Warman's targets are few. Slips it out for Petros. He was nowhere near it. Warman was down. In the grasp of Jones, number 90. Well, they tried to set up the screen to Tim Petros, but the Argonauts really weren't fooled. You have to entice them upfield and let them get the penetration. Toronto really never got the penetration. And read the screen easily. You know, it's tough. There's not too many plays in the playbook. Second and 16 you're going to be able to convert on. And once again, Calgary thwarted from a pretty good scoring opportunity. 104 to play. Third quarter. It is the Argos by 9 at 19 to 10. Stamps out of field goal range. That means Glenn Harper. Hunting from his 50. Darnell Clash on the run. A flag down. No yard. Flash through it as he sucked Hogue right in. Smart play by Clash. Well, they tell the guys. Calgary number 14. They tell the guys to come up and catch that football. If you can, don't let it bounce and hit the ground. And he did that. Larry Hogue just couldn't get out of the way. 
So that's 15 big yards for the Argonauts. Instead of on about the 15-yard line, they move out to the to the 29. 29-yard line. First down, Argos. They lead by nine. 38 seconds to play third quarter. Good numbers for Gil Renfro so far. Let's see what he does with his drive. More flags. Renfro breaks out of the pocket. Grabs close to eight. Well, been a lot of penalties here in the third quarter. Game, game has slowed down. See, I think the guys are holding on. Holding Toronto number 56. Holding Toronto. Joe Moss. Well, Joe ought to be pleased. He's working with the defense, and they've done a good job tonight. Held the Calgary Stampeders to one touchdown. Of course, that was a result of a turnover. He's sending out for Chinese food right now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they've got this one quite wrapped up yet. 18 seconds, third quarter. First and 20, Argonauts. At their own 19, Renfro, some pressure now. Fired it into the turf. Might have been for Tony Johns, but Johns had no chance to catch it. You know, John, a lot of people might say, well, you know, first and 20, let's fire deep downfield and try and pick up something but you know you you tend to be a little more conservative when you got a punter like Hank Elisic you know you think to yourself well I don't want to give up an interception and we've got the good special teams here so look if we don't convert second and 20 now we've got big Hank to kick it 60 yards and get us out of trouble the special teams meeting on the sidelines right there well, that's the secondary Darnell Clash Reggie Pleasant trying to figure out exactly what the Stampeders have been doing to them I think they figured it out pretty well last play third quarter Renfro Looks like he might have it through there to Jeff Smith. Uh, he runs a super pass pattern here. Makes, makes a nice catch on Gil Renfro. They might have picked up the first down. Big first down for the Argonauts in the final play of third quarter. It is Toronto by nine and the Calgary Stampeder. Numbers must favor the Argonauts. In some categories they do on the scoreboard. But look at the Stampeders. They've 298 yards net compared to 245 for the Argos. Turnovers and the one big one to Rodney Harding to set up that touchdown. <laughs> well, in Canada. They should be happy here in Toronto. They get the lead going in the fourth quarter. Once again, they shut out their opponents in the third quarter. Stampeder's not able to score. Pressure for Renfro. He fired it into the turf and they flag him for it. Oh, yeah, no Quincy question. Williams. That's a good call by Ross Perrier because Stu Laird and Quincy Williams right in there. Renfro had nobody to throw to. He tried to get away with one, but they caught him. That'll be lost to down plus the yardage. Intentional grounding, Toronto number 14. The other call that would be possible, and I agree with that one, is it's much more than that. He might have might have been called a fumble. I mean, they had to throw a flag on him, right? Well, he just tried to get rid of it and save the sack, but couldn't do it. Deep for the Stampeder. Alyssa from his 15. Gary Allen ran right by a couple, needed an extra couple of yards on the sidelines, and he might have had somewhere to go. Jake Vaughn forced him out. Well, he almost had it. They had the wall set up out the sideline. Initially, they were trying to take it up the middle, but. Gary Allen's such an elusive punt returner, he decided to break it to the outside. A couple of guys picked up some blocks, and he was about a step away from taking it all away. Watch initially, they want to try and create a seam up the middle, but the Argos are down quickly to cover it. Then he breaks it outside, and Jake Vaughn in pursuit here, and I couldn't see the number who made the block. It looked like Quincy Williams came back, and Allen was a step from taking it all the way. 22-yard gain for Allen, sets the Stampeders up. They're 52 with a first down. Good fake. No, no. No catch. Woodruff tried to keep his feet in bounds. He was standing there. Wow. Could not. Just a tremendous uh, play fake by Rick Warman. He holds everybody, and Tony Woodruff does everything possible to try and stay in bounds. Now he only needs one foot, and all that one foot stepping outside the line. But one foot steps out of bounds at the same time, he's out of bounds. This is second and ten. Stampeders from their 52. Early in the fourth. Warman. 
Stopped short of a first down, but not by much by Don Moen. And Warman took a pretty good hit as he went to the turf. Yeah, I think he's hurt too. He and Mark Mabry, Don Moen and Mark Mabry met him head on. And you got to give Warman credit. He's got courage trying to dive for that first down marker. Last week against Winnipeg, he made some crucial runs late in the game to get them first downs. But I think we're going to see Carl Fodor. The rookie from Marshall University, who is the backup quarterback tonight, because watch this hit here. Uh, he gets he got he it gets, in the back, didn't he? Wow, he gets pretzeled right here. Watch how he gets it. Gary Moten's coming in as well. He doesn't get in the play, but that's the helmet right in the back, and that hurts. That's how I broke the transverse process in my lower back one year. So Rick Warman is down. Stampeders will send in another quarterback. We'll take a brief timeout for the Argos leading Calgary 19 to 10. Rick Warman heading to the sidelines. Carl Fodor comes into the game for the Calgary Stampeders, facing third and two. Well, he set a conference passing record when he attended Marshall University. Had a tryout with the St. Louis Cardinals, could not stick with him. Signed as a free agent with the Stampeders this spring and originally was not in their plans at all, but now with the Rick Johnson being moved to the reserve list and Rick Warman taking over the starting capacity, Carl Fodor is in as a backup quarterback taking over. 6'2", 190 pounds, got the good size. Bob Vespasiani likens him to a young Tom Clements, but I guess that... Nice way to start. He comes in on a third down gamble. May have to wait and see how much like Clements he looks. Got the first down. I think. Borman seems to be all right on the sideline. Yeah, he's going to come back in the football game, and that's good. They need him if they have a, they want to have a chance of winning this day. You don't want to put the rookie in now and try and come back. Measurement called for. Much short. A heartbreaker for the Stampeders. The Argos get a turnover on down. What do you say, Lee? Well, inch I and a half, too? Yeah, inch and a half, but I say the Toronto Argonaut defense has played well all night. And just the one touchdown scored against them, and they really have uh, played well. You know, it carries over from that second half in Hamilton. They shut Hamilton down to three points in the second half last week, and they've really carried that over and must have had a good week of practice because they're playing awfully well tonight. Turnovers? Three for the Calgary Stampeders, one for the Argonauts. It is a first down Toronto. To the Argo, 47. Tough slugging inside. Holman there to make the tackle. On Warren Hudson. Or on Tony Johns, rather, 23. Now, I'll tell you, a lot of places I wouldn't want to be tonight. And it's <laughs> in that suit is one of them. That might be the top of the list. Okay, you think I, it's hot up here? I, I'll tell you what, I hope he makes a lot of money for doing that. And then you get on a hot motorcycle. This is second down, eight to go. Safety blitz. Boy, they picked it up well. Joyner. Nice catch. Caught by Darcy Cop. First down easily at the 45 of Calgary. Well, you know things are going well for you offensively when you pick up the safety blitz and you hit your receiver on the post pattern. Kenny Joyner, that's a mismatch on Darcy Kopp. And it came with Greg Peterson in the middle safety. He came on the blitz. Argos read it, picked it up, and that's a great offensive play. 15-yard pickup for the Argonauts. Now inside the 45 at the 44 of Calgary. Renfro with time. Man open. Smith. Great catch. Outstanding catch by Daryl Smith in front of Darcy Cobb. 27 yards. Well, you remember how I said Daryl Smith would remember Darcy Cobb? Darcy Cobb was right there to apply the hit again, but this time Daryl Smith makes the super catch. He goes up in the air. He's hurt again, and he was the recipient of the Cobb hit, but that is a super catch. Back-to-back -back great offensive plays by the Argonauts. They're really executing well. 10 minutes, 53 seconds left in quarter four. It is the Argonauts by nine, 19 to 10 on the Stampeders. And threatening once more inside the 20. 
You know, Gil Renfro can really help his receivers out by reading that coverage just a little sooner. You know, you send the two inside receivers straight down the middle of the field, and whichever way the middle safety goes, Darcy Cop, you throw the other way. If Renfro can read that just a little quicker, he's going to save his receivers a lot of punishment. Smith looks to be all right. He's had a good night, Daryl Smith. Four catches, and even 100. 54 of those on that one touchdown he had in the first half. Danny Barrett on the sidelines charting some plays. And of course, Toronto's quarterback situation is not too bad these days with Gil Renfro coming through and John Congemi. They want to get him back in the lineup. He was really impressive before he was injured. Renfro, 13 of 26, 214 yards, two touchdowns, one interception on the night. Looking for more here on first down. Down to the one. Lost football. Do the Stampeders get possession? Looks like Toronto will hang on. Ken Joyner, the reception, lost the football, but they mark it a 17-yard pickup at the once, one. Once again, a post pattern on for Kenny Joyner. He runs in now. He knows he's going into heavy traffic, but good concentration on that football. Nice 17-yard pickup. They're down to the one-yard line. This has been a good drive for the Argonauts. They've really executed well. Good pass protection, and Gil Renfro standing tall in that pocket, making the good throws. Ball on the one. Three tries from here. Well, the Argos need it. Penalty over the top. Touchdown. Joyner sets it up. Penalty takes it home. Twenty-five to ten. The Argos lead the Stampeders. Well, a good lead block from Tony Johns, number 23, and when you're on the one-yard line, the easiest way is up and over, and he doesn't make it by much, but nevertheless, he's in the end zone with his second touchdown of the ball game, and Toronto has converted a very pretty drive here in the fourth quarter, and now extends their lead to 16 points. <laughs> he gets a little high up there, but he's over and in, and another turnover. This one on downs. That's where the Argo drive began. Well, they look sharp. Defense has played well, and the offense is doing their job here in the second half. One more for Lance Chomick. A 16-point advantage for the Argonauts and the Calgary Stampeders. Again, turnovers, not quite as many as last week, but turnovers have hurt Calgary. Under the Stampeders, they have moved the ball effectively on, at times. The Argos have been very effective. Five plays to cover 62 yards and set up Gil Fennerty from one yard away, an example of that. Well, you know, they did it so nicely, John, and one of the areas that Dan Ferroni talked about in that clip earlier was they had to improve on their pass protection this year and protect the quarterback. They did that really well on that last drive with picking up the blitz, and it culminated in that nice scoring. From the 47, Gary Allen steps up for close to five. Well, we did talk about the running game. In the opening of this telecast tonight, it has been very much in evidence, both teams. Well, what we talked about was Gil Fennerty getting back in the lineup, and, and I mentioned his pass-catching abilities. He caught that one touchdown pass and up and over the other one. But I think the real story offensively for the Argonauts has been, number one, they've given Gil Renfro time to throw, and he's been able to stand tall and step up and not worry about being sandbagged all the time back there. Injured Argonaut. Number 90, Marlon Jones. They're getting a little short of defensive linemen, the Argos, right now. Well, Kulka is hurt. Kulka is able to come back in the ballgame. And when you talk about what was a pretty good front four at the beginning of the season, now consists of Rodney Harding, Glenn Kulka, and Greg Raynard. And it's not exactly the group that you really want to have in there. Warman on second and five. Wheeler can't hang on. Coming across Selwyn Drain, 26. Good cover. Warman's pass to Wheeler is the play. Broken up by number 26, Selwyn Drain. Well, here's Ron Wheeler lined up at the tight end. Now, here's Selwyn Drain. You watch. He's just coming back in his own coverage here. He's responsible for that area. He's going to, Ron Wheeler's going to release up the middle and watch the play that Selwyn Drain comes over and makes. 
He's just going back in that zone coverage. He's reading the quarterback now. He's open. He's got to be hit a little quicker, but Selwyn Drain comes over. That's just a great defensive play. Rick Warman's got to learn to deliver that ball a little sooner. Stan Peters kick it away. Harper steps across his 40. Good kick. Darnell Clash tries the outside. Nowhere to go. 14, Larry Ho covering for Calgary. That's Jake Vaughn under the ice pack down there. I don't know if he's trying to keep cool or if he's got a sore left hand. He's had himself a good game. That big interception. You know, you look at turning points in a ball game, one or two plays that maybe were the difference. His interception in the first half when Calgary had that drive going from their own seven yard line might have been the one that really kind of turned this game around. The Argonauts seem to pick up after that and they've never looked back since. 8 13 to play. Fourth quarter. Argonaut first down. Benedict has it around the outside. McCray moved up to lead the tacklers. But the big hit was Lamont Jeffers. Lamont Jeffers made the top of now well, there's Coach Best Paziani, you know, and he's trailing once again in the fourth quarter. Looks like he might lose the fifth game in a row. You know, he just has not been able to get that chemistry back that they had last year, and you have to wonder what's happened to this club. Second and seven to the far side. No catch. I don't think Edwards has a catch tonight. McCrary has been all over him like a glove. Good yards in the reverse, though, for Edwards. 20-yard pickup. Well, that's the nice thing about a football team. You know, Edwards came up with the big key catches last week. Now, tonight, it's been Daryl Smith and Kenny Joyner, and, you know, you, you can spread it around, and one guy takes charge every week. That's what you like to have. A little high for Hank. No chance for a block for the Stampeders, but a short one this time. On the run, Gary Allen. Gary Across Allen midfield. Stopped by Willie Pless. Pless has been a little more visible. Well, he really has tonight. And, you know, he's come back off an injury, missed training camp. And, you know, people just don't realize how it affects a ball player missing training camp. I think Rick Johnson is a prime example. He has just not been able to get his timing going this year. And Willie Pless, the same kind of thing. You needed two or three games to, to get your feel back in there. And tonight he's played much better. Gary Allen, on the other hand, he struggled. I think he's still hurting. He was out with the rib injury last week. But... Tonight, he's been hit hard by that Toronto defense, and he's feeling the effects. Allen has had a better game tonight. A couple of Argos onto the lip. There's a lot of things that the Heat can do. You get cramps, and you get mentally tired, and I think that sometimes can lead to some injuries because you just are not as alert as you were in the first quarter. You're not moving as quickly. You're maybe a little more vulnerable, and... You know, you never know how injuries occur, but sometimes in a hot, muggy game like this, it can happen in the fourth quarter. Guys just are not quite as alert as they were earlier. Reynard shaken up moments ago, limping off the field. Number 54, Jeff Watson, a backup offensive lineman. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow morning at the Argos Exhibition Stadium ticket office from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. And at Everybody's hitting the, the jug tonight. Located at the Sheridan Center from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Right, you got to keep those fluids the going. And the Eskimos, Friday, August I'm 7th. working on my fifth Sprite up here. <laughs> I think that defensive front's going to get a couple of days off, and I know they have 10 days before they have to play again, but these guys are going to need some time to get healthy. Gerald Bayless should be back, which is great news for the Argonauts. Stan Peters are not really affected too much by injury at this stage. Getting Poli back was their big concern. Argos will have the weekend off. Win, lose, or draw, according to Bob Obilovich. On first and ten, Warman steps up. Fired behind. Oh, you're right, John. I was behind Larry Willis, but that's a catchable football. Larry's got lots of talent. He's the all-time leading receiver at Fresno State history. And so when you've got that kind of ability, you've got to make these catches. This is not that tough a catch. A little behind him, but might have been distracted. He had to throw it up over the top of Willie Pless. But when you're behind by 16 points, you've got to have your guys making some big plays for you. 26 to 10, Argos lead the Stampeders. Second and 10. Calgary at midfield. 
Warman needs a strike here. Goes to the far side. Goes to the Argonauts. You know, they real Marshall Toner made the catch and then they stripped the ball loose. It must have been Duran Major, number 27. He would have been the likely one to be recovering over there. Reggie Pleasant also in on the play. And what an awful break for the Stampeders. I mean, they just not have had one thing go their way tonight. Warman fired it in for Toner. Toner couldn't hang on. Another turnover. 627 to play, fourth quarter. Stampeders trail by 16. Third year Argo, Rodney Harding. He's had a pretty good night. And you saw the fast feet of Rodney Harding on a 71 yard interception return. Well, we talked about plays that can turn games around. Jake Bond's interception was a huge play, but Rodney Harding's interception in the third quarter really got the Argos on track, put them well out ahead. Foreman just hanging up. I don't know if the answers are coming from upstairs or not. Well, they, they just have beat themselves. There's no question about that. You know, he's Rick Warman's played pretty well. You know, the one interception to Harding was a bad one. The Jake Bond was so so, but you know, all the mistakes, the penalties when they've had first downs, you, I mean, you just can't uh, keep making those mistakes and expect to win football teams. The other team's not going to lie down for you. He's been getting some protection tonight, too. Oh, Better protection. Listen, they've done a good job. Because Toronto's not a big blitzing team. They're, they're a good team to pass protect against. Nowhere to go for Gil Fennerty. Hallman was there, but so was Matt Finley, 37 initially. Okay, now Gil Renfro, now he's thinking, I got six minutes left, I got second and long here. I don't want to do anything crazy, you know, like we're going to probably throw the football, but if it looks like I got to force it in, I'm going to throw it away, let Hank punt. And we got 16 point lead, let our defense play. From the 45, it is second and nine, Argos. Throwing situation, nowhere to go for Renfro, and a flag down. In the Calgary secondary. Harold Hallman led the Stampeders in the race for the quarterback that time. Well, when you throw a flag in the secondary, usually it, uh, it means the defense. Toronto number 63. <laughs> well, the, the well, flag came down in the secondary. I don't know how they would see holding from there, but I is, guess they is did. Is there a wind I didn't see down there? <laughs> but uh, the flag was way downfield. Jim Kardash got for holding. There's Harold Hallman. Got the job done defensively that time. Alyssa kicks it away. Allen or Hall. Richie Hall, five foot six. It's a pretty good return. Tell you what, John, he's fearless. The way he takes that football and just runs right up the middle. Stop by Gary Moten. 14 yard return for Hall. Alisic dropping down a little bit, 37 that time. Not up to his usual standards. Average should still be pretty good on the night. He had a couple of boomers early. Yeah, the 164 yarder, beauty. Alisic leads the CFL in punting yardage. Not surprising. It is up to Rick Warman now. First down, Calgary. Has his man, Allen. Allen short of the first down, not by much. 13 carries, 76 yards on the night. A couple of catches as well. A good play on first down. Toronto predominantly his own team on first and ten. And when that happens, dump it off to the running backs. And again for Allen. He has the first down. Allen still rolling. And down to the 35. Good run after the catch. Stopped by Selwyn Drain. Uh, what a great effort by Gary Allen, you know, late in the game, and he's still really giving 100%. And, you know, they still have a chance. 16 points is not insurmountable, but Gary Allen has paid the price. They have hit him hard tonight. Stampeders have to punch it into the end zone on this drive and narrow it to have any kind of a chance of winning tonight. 4-15, fourth quarter. Greg Raynard also injured on the play for the Argonauts and they've been really shuffling their front three around the night. Andy McVeigh will take over for Allen. Greg's been down a couple of times, hasn't he? Yeah. Freddie Dunbar's getting a workout. Freddie's going to lose weight tonight. He might. Don't count on it, though. He 
He's never been a trainer big on conditioning for himself. <laughs> Glad you said that, John, and not me. He's been around a long time. Nice guy, friendly. <laughs> At least he was friendly. Lately. Yeah, I think you're a little late with that, John. <laughs> I mean, you know, Freddie's going to hear about this one, and uh, you're going to pay the price. Hope you don't get a hurt hand or something after you win there. <laughs> First and ten, Stampeders. Argo 35. Warman needs some big moments here. Time to throw, time to run, and Warman takes off. Got hurt the last time he carried. Got down a little more quickly before Pless got to him this time. I think he's got to be even quicker than that getting down because he has taken some punishment. Picks up nine, though. A big nine yards for the Stampeders. Less than four minutes to play, fourth quarter. He's into that hurry-up offense now. He's got to get in there quickly if he can. Eight of nine, second and one. Harding is after him. Petros makes the catch. I'm not sure he got the first down. Harding chasing. Moten hit Petros. That's great hit by Gary Moten. You know, 6'1", 220. He's good size linebacker. And, well, he's been around with a few teams. Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. Watch how he comes up, squares up on Tim Petros. He does not go any further. That's what you want from a linebacker. A guy that comes up, makes a hit, and does not allow another yard. It is now third and one. Warman will throw. Good catch. Wow, well, you know, Petros held on. Petros is thinking, down. boy, I'm going to get hit hard again like this. And uh, that's why he bobbled the football a little bit. He was taking a peek to see who was coming. But he hung on, and they get a first down. 26 to 10, Toronto leading Calgary. That is a 16 point difference. Stan Peters with a first down at the Argo 22. Warman for Toner. They're chipping away. Close to five, maybe even better than five. Reggie Pleasant to tackle on Toner. Larry Willis is coming back to the huddle and he's waving his arms. He ran a post corner on Duran Major, was all alone in the end zone, but Rick Warman couldn't see him and instead dumped it off to Marshall Toner. Three minute warning on the field, two minutes, 48 seconds to play. It is the Argonauts leading the Stampeders by 16. We'll be back for the finish after this. Here's have called a timeout. Thunderfoot averaging 48-5 on the night. Just another day at the office for him. And he's happy he didn't get called in to be the backup to the backup quarterback. Yeah, I don't. I think he's very happy. I don't think he really wants to come in and do that. Renfro had a pretty good night. You know, you saw Bob Vespasiani there. You know, the, the difficult thing about this for the Stampeders is now five in a row they've lost and. You know, it, it, it just gets so tough to try and win a football game. The pressure gets bigger and bigger, and, you know, it, it, it's not the easiest thing to try and turn it around. If they can just eliminate some mistakes, you know, they got some pretty good quality football players. They just need to eliminate those mistakes and play it uh, closer to the best kind of football game. Alisic near his five. Big rush that time. Alisic goes down, no flag. Richie Hall. Hall lost his helmet or his shoulder pad came out, I guess. Don Mullen, the tackle. It has been a frustrating year. The Stampeders, 30 turnovers going in at five tonight. Well, that's what we talked about. They have that takeaway giveaway category now, and they were a minus 11. Coming in, and tonight I would think they lose about four more around minus 15. You just cannot win a lot of football games doing that. Very close to six turnovers a game. Warman has Wheeler. Nice catch to the 25. Nice catch for Ron Wheeler. Mark at a 36 yard gain. They've used that play a number of times tonight. One, he couldn't squeeze. That time he hangs on. It's a good play. Good pass from Rick Warman. This, he reads it a little quicker this time and gives him the ball fast and nobody can get to him and knock it away. Stamps, hurry it up from the 25 first down. Warman quickly to the end zone and just too far. Flag comes down. Jake Vaughn took a shot at Gary Allen coming out of the backfield. And a roughing penalty, I'm sure. Major foul, unnecessary roughness, Toronto number 24. First down. One 
41 on the clock. The Stampeders have to score here. It'll be tough to miss. Uh, Gary Allen's the injured ball player in the end zone after he took that hit from Jay Cloth. It's a good pass pattern. Good play, everything. You know, Rick Warman just kind of overthrows the football, or they have six points here. Allen up to try and get it, and there comes Jake Vaughn. And, well, I don't know. Jake Vaughn, it's tough for him to tell if the guy makes the catch and he comes across. That's that's a close, close call. He had ba bad ribs last week. He got sore everything this week. He'll be uh, spending a few days in that cold whirlpool bath. Even the bandana will be sore. Yeah, we'll be putting a Band-Aid on the bandana. Calgary 264 yards passing compared to 231 for the Argos. Rushing 121, Calgary 99 Argos. The Stampeders have more total yards at 385. Warm into the end zone. Touchdown. Larry Willis. That one looked very easy. 136 left on the clock. Stampeders close. Well, Darnell Class decides not to play it too tight on Larry Willis. He runs it out. Nothing fancy about this one. He's got his fourth touchdown of the year. And I'm sure they're going to go for two points here. And pretty well have to. Darnell Clash not too tight in the coverage. Willis deep in the end zone. You see Clash's head down. He, he's a good acquisition for the Argonauts, but he really hasn't uh, been able to come back the way he did in 1985 when he was an All-Canadian. Had nine interceptions that year, but really still feeling his way around that Toronto defensive backfield. Plays a tough spot, though, like third base in baseball. Out oh, there, yeah, that's the hot corner. You're on the side with most right-handed cornerbacks. You're going to get some action out there. Orman looks for two on the conversion. More pressure. He goes down. They get nine. Gary Moten. That Argo defense has been vicious at times, and they have come up with big plays. Well, they have Gary Moten with his size of 220. He's a good blitzing linebacker. Actually, they're really playing a 3-4 defense most of the evening tonight with Gary Moten being the main rushing linebacker. That time he did a great job to stop them from that two-point conversion. Nevertheless, the Stampeders do come away with six points in that 61-yard drive. Three plays. Larry Willis, his fourth touchdown of the year. They've narrowed it. Now to 26 to 16. That's 10 points. The two point conversion would have given them some hope, but now they still need a field goal and a touchdown. Minute 36 to go. <laughs> Decision time. Well, you got to get possession quickly. Well, I think what you do, you kick it deep, and you got to hope your defense plays tough and gets you the ball back. Then if you score, then you have another decision about onside kicks in. I think now with the minute, the minute 36 to go, I think you kick it deep and hope you get a score and then think about the onsider. Now they've got all defensive people in that kick cover team, so I, I suspect you'll see them go deep. Toronto doesn't think so. they got a short team in there. What do I know? They go short. The Argos have the football. Grabbed by Jeff Smith, 88. Well, that's why they put him in that kick receiving team and anticipating the short kickoff. And they put guys in there that are used to handling the football, and it pays off because Jeff Smith comes up with the kickoff return. And the Argonauts can kind of just salt this one away now with their possession at Calgary's 53 yard line, or 48 yard line, rather. From the 48 first down Argos, they lead by 10 at 26 16, 133. Fourth quarter. Tony John. Tony it's pretty good yardage. Yeah. Yeah. Bernie Morris. I believe Calgary's used their timeout. Uh, John used it around the 3 250 mark or so. And John will be very content to let that clock run down, take the full 20 seconds each time. And forget their timeout. Oh. <laughs> Tony Violet away. Yeah. Johns once more. Tony Johns, the ball carrier. He'll be short of a first down, I believe. It's third and two. Game of two. Ball spotted at the 40. We needed about the 41 and a half. 
106 on the clock and counting. Well, Hank's not going to really worry. I don't think about single points or anything right here, but make sure you get that football off. It, it means nothing if you get it blocked. Kick it 30, 40 yards, doesn't really matter. Hall and Willis deep for this one. In fact, that's a good play. Let that clock run out. Take your full 20. Move back five. Doesn't matter for him. That's smart football. Time count violation. Toronto, number eight. The clock will start back up on the snap of the football, so they really don't lose anything. These same two teams, the rematch in Calgary, August 2nd to Sunday. Stan Peters at that point will trying to be snap, will try and snap a five-game losing streak. Two in a row for the Argos. Oh, what a punt. Nice and high. This is Richie Allen with a long way to go to make any difference. He's up to the six-yard line, 35 seconds on the clock. Well, some people might say, why didn't he give up the single, take the field position, but really, they've got to keep that 10-point spread to have any chance. They've got to hope for a touchdown and a field goal, not two touchdowns. So he had no choice. He had to bring it out. Now they only got 103 yards to go for a major. Kind of a tall order against a team that's only given up one touchdown in this half. And that only gets them within three. 14-yard yeah. return. Alyssa kicked that one 58. Woodruff, the intended receiver. No real chance. Of four seconds. Runoff now. 31 seconds. Woodruff has that one out to the 20. In front of Darnell Clash, the Argos will give quite a bit of ground at this yeah, stage. I don't think they really care about those catchers. Those are just for your own personal statistics right now. Warman for Tim Petros. He's to the 30, 16 seconds on the clock. Mown the tackle, but not enough time for these Stampeders. Tim Petros, good for the first down. Mown again. Eight seconds remaining. Warman for Wheeler. Right about all they're doing right here is prolonging the agony. Stan Peters will see their record now go to one and five, last place in the Western Division. Toronto Argonauts jump over top of the Ottawa Rough Riders with five points now, and they find themselves in second spot training in Winnipeg. That should be it. Final catch goes to Ron Wheeler. Bob Ovilovich makes it two in a row. Bob Vespasiani has now lost five in a row. Well, John, you know, I look back to when I heard Ovilovich in the warm-up telling the players, each one of them, now we've got to get off to a better start now. Four quarters tonight. Four quarters tonight, he was saying. And he got four, didn't he, really? Yeah, he really did. I thought the team looked really sharp. The offense moved the ball well enough in the first half. And